So today's sermon scripture is in the book of Genesis, chapter twenty-six, from verse twenty-three to verse twenty-four. The book of Genesis, chapter twenty-six, from verse twenty-three to verse twenty-four. From there he went up to Beersheba. That night the Lord appeared to him and said, "I am the God of your father Abraham. Do not be afraid, for I am with you." I will bless you and will increase the number of your descendants for the sake of my servant Abraham. Today's sermon topic is "Do not be afraid." Do not be afraid. So, in chapter twenty-six, from first to, first one all the way to first twenty-three, as we went through before, you would、uh, remember that from first one to first six. God reveal unto Isaac again regarding to his promise, his covenant with Abraham, and right now he elaborate more unto Isaac that yes, I am here and I will bless you as long as you obey me to stay here. And Isaac did, but then from verse seven to verse eleven, you would see that even with the word of God, Isaac still have the irrational fear regarding to his life. He feared that the people in that land would actually kill him because of his wife Rebecca being too beautiful, and so he did the same thing as Abraham did to call his own wife his sister, so that he thinks that that way it will protect him. But at the end of、uh, of the first eleven, you would see that God protect him regarding to his marriage with Rebecca. Allowing Abimelech, the king of that land, to find out that they are husband and wife, and that he will put out put out a law or a decree that whoever harm Isaac and his wife would be put to death. So still, even though Isaac fear, you know, fear for his life, God still protect him. God still kept his word. And then from verse twelve all the way to verse twenty-two, you would see that God blessed him so much to the point that the people around him actually envied him, and they stopped the well. And then,、uh, well, that's what envy people do. I want what you have, but I know I don't have it, and I won't have it, so you can't have it too. So that's what envy people do. They actually stop the blessing of God to Isaac. And you can see that Isaac did not did not really stand up for his right because you know Abraham had a treaty with Abimelech regarding to all the wells in that land, and it is in his right, in Isaac's right, to claim those from the king Abimelech right there. But then he did not do so. He just keep on going around the places to dig well until in verse twenty two, he finally dug a well. And no one quarrel over it, and he said, "Loud, the Lord has given us room, and we will flourish in the land." So, through all this verses from verse one to verse twenty-two, you would see that God actually protect him, bless him, kept God's word. God kept His word to Isaac. God protected him, his marriage, and God was faithful unto His promise to Isaac. If you stay there. I will bless you, and during that famine, Isaac had a hundredfold from the plant、uh, uh, from the crops that he planted. So you would see that God kept His word. God is faithful, and from verse twenty three and verse twenty four, you would see that God appeared to Isaac and say what, something very important that I believe today it also apply to all of us, especially in today's. Uh, environment today's event worldwide event, and so look at verse twenty four again. That night the Lord appeared to him and said, "I am the God of your father Abraham. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. I will bless you and will increase the number of your descendants for the sake of my servant Abraham." So in this one verse, there are three things that I want you to notice. And perhaps it will help you to refocus in your life, so that you will not be afraid of the circumstances of the things that happening around you. Okay, 
So first thing is that God appeared to Isaac and the first thing that he said to Isaac is who he is. I am the God of your father, Abraham. So what's so significant here? You need to understand that Isaac only heard about this God from his father's word. And that's pretty much it. You can say that, yeah, well, he also listened or may have heard the voice of God when the time he was, you know, bound by Abraham and being put on the altar. Yes, that might be one time. But then remember, every single time before this chapter, God spoke to Abraham, not until Isaac. And until this chapter, you would actually see that God spoke to Isaac. But then for God to introduce him as the God of your father, Abraham, it carries the significance of the covenant that God cut with Abraham. And it reminds once again, Isaac, that I am your God. And you are the one that I promise unto your father who will hold this covenant after your father pass away. So for God to introduce himself as the God of your father, Abraham, it helps Isaac to refocus once again. Don't panic. I am here. And the reason why you are here because I am here. And quite literally for Isaac's case as well, because without God, his father Abraham already gave up giving birth unto any children through his wife, Sarah, and Sarah as well. Both of them gave up long ago until God appeared unto Abraham and said, this time next year, you, your wife will bear a child for you and he will, his name will be Isaac. And so all this to say, God is reminding Isaac that I am here. I am here. The covenant that I cut with your father, I remember and I am faithful to keep it. I am here. I am the God of your father, Abraham. And right now I'm talking to you. So the application for Christians today regarding to this one simple sentence is, is that do you, do you remember who your God is? One passage in the Bible we usually may only remember like or, or read it once in a year, which is when, uh, when the angel Gabriel sent the message unto Mary that, you know, you are going to give birth to Jesus. His name is Jesus. His name is also Emmanuel. God is with you. But the most of the time we may remember this during Christmas time more because there will be songs regarding to the word Emmanuel. But then this actually applies to us every single day by remembering who God is. God is faithful. Do you believe in that? God is faithful. Whatever he promised unto you, Whatever he says that he is going to do, he will do it. And every single time, he finished them all. I always challenge brothers and sisters, when the time you pray, keep a log. Write it down. Write down what you are going to pray and give it certain time frame and then flip back to the pages, like maybe a month ago, two months ago, and check off what did God do for you in the past month when the time you pray? I did that and then to my surprise, almost 100% of the time, all my prayers are answered. And of course, I'm not asking for like, you know, five numbers to win the lotto or six or seven. I actually don't know how many numbers. But then if you ask according to the will of God, if you ask God, for the things that you know he promised unto you, he will answer you. Why? Because he promised unto Abraham, unto Isaac, unto Jacob, and then unto Moses, and then unto David. Every single promise in the Bible, he is going to fulfill it. 
But then Christians, do you remember how you are going to receive it? It's not through your work. It's not through anything else but your faith. Remember the day that you became became a Christian, the first day. How did you receive the salvation of God? You did not do anything. Someone, hopefully, is still your pastor or your brother and sisters in church, lead you into prayer. You pray. You confess that Jesus is the Son of God, that His blood cleanses your sins away, that. He died for you on the cross, and three days later he resurrected to show you that he is son, the Son of God, and he is right now in the heaven with God the Father. See that prayer that you pray in faith, you receive the salvation. In faith, you receive the Holy Spirit. In faith, you receive the promise of God in your life. So don't forget. Today, you need to know who your God is. Your God is faithful. Your God is the God of of Abraham, of Isaac, of Jacob, of Israel. You believe in the God who create everything. You believe in the God, the only true God, that saves you from your sins, saves you from death. And all this, you receive it through faith. So remember who your God is. Don't ever lose focus on that, because if you lose focus on that, guess what happened? You are going to sink. You are going to panic. You are going to be afraid. And look at what God said immediately after He claimed that He is the God of your father Abraham to Isaac. Okay, the second thing that He said is, "Do not." Be afraid, for I am with you. You know how important that part is, and how many times us Christians overlook that part. That is, God is with you. God is with you. Maybe you have heard it so many times before, and it may not mean too much to you when the time you panic. Granted, it's difficult when the time you already panic, when the time you are already afraid. It's very difficult to focus that God is with you. So what, right? So what? Will my problem goes away right now? Will everything turns out to be good right now? No, I still need to wait. I still need to do this and that. And then, out from nowhere, you find that you know what? It's not. It's not that significant that God is with you, right? Yeah. But then let's put things into perspective, okay? Let's say today you hit a financial problem. You have a、uh, financial difficulties right now. So, who would you rather trust? So let's say two men comes to you and say, "Do not worry, you know your financial problem. I'll take care of it." Okay. So let's say the first one come to you is you know your friend, in which he is an employee, and he has no saving. And he comes to you during your financial difficulty and say, "You know what? You're going to be fine. I'll stay with you. You know, I'll take care of it for you." Well, that doesn't do much, right? Let's say another person come to you saying the same thing, but then he is Bill Gates. Will that make a difference? Of course, it makes a difference. Why? Because you know Bill Gates has money, right? Because you know that. When Bill Gates say your financial problem is no longer a problem, I'm going to take care of it. Then you immediately the problem goes away. Why? Because you know that Bill Gates has the money. That's all. That's all. And when the time he says that he's willing to take care of your financial difficulty, then you know what? Everything's done. Why? Because you know Bill Gates has money. Maybe you don't need to know him personally. But then the news around is that Bill Gates is rich, right? That's all. That's all. So why would you trust Bill Gates when the time your friend, whom you know for a long time, that you, you know facing the same problem, offering the same thing, saying everything the same, but then you know that Bill Gates can help you when the time he say he will. The reason is that you know him that he is rich. That's all. That is all. 
But then in your life, nothing is always about money. Nothing is always about materials. Because your life is way more than that. Way more than that. Who can help you with your life problem? Who can help you with a life and death situation? Me personally, well, I've witnessed so many times of the life and death situation and I can guarantee you that even with the most brilliant doctors, most talented medical staff around you. And when the time they tell you that, we don't know what's going on. Yeah. We, they, can know, they, they, can, they can be not sure what's going on. And that's a life and death situation. So who, who can you rely on? After the people around you and you know that they are the top line of the workers in that field and tells you that they don't know what to do. Who can you turn to? And this is why, Christians, you need to take time to know who your God is. You need to take time to let this truth sink into your heart. God is with you. God is with you. If you do not take time to let this sink into your life, eventually you will fail and you will fall. Why? Because it carries no weight in your heart. It carries no weight in your life. Because you don't know what God can do for you in the middle of nowhere in your life. God is life. God has life in Him. Your life problem, Bill Gates won't be able to solve it. No one on earth will be able to help you out except God. Why? Because He created you in the first place. Just like the metaphor that I use, you know when the time you have financial difficulties and if Bill Gates say he's willing to help you to resolve that, you will immediately say yes. Why? Because you know that that would no longer be a problem. And right now, if your life has anything that makes you worry, anything that makes you panic, you have to understand that no one will be able to help you out other than God. God say He is with you, meaning that He is there for you. He is there for you to help you. And what else will you be afraid of when the time you know that the God of heaven and earth, creator of everything, faithful in all His words, faithful to fulfill every promise that He promised you in the Bible, for you, what else can you not resolve? And for God to say unto Isaac, do not be afraid, for I am with you. Do you know how powerful that is? Sometimes I, I believe that we overlooked the living environment, living situation of the people in the Bible. We, we may perceive it as like, you know, today we have a house, we have utility companies that support everything that, you know, that we need as long as we pay the bill. Think about Isaac. He's in the, he, he, he was living in, you know, some city. Yeah, but then everything was difficult for him. He was a foreigner of that land. You know, people literally boycott him because he, you know, they saw that God bless him so much. He was being pushed out. He was being boycott. You think the law, the treaty will help him? No, King Abimelech didn't even say anything when the time the people of that land, you know, stop all the wealth that Abraham had. You think you had it hard? Well, look again. Isaac practically did nothing wrong. Nothing. 
God blessed him because he obeyed God, but then people around him envy him and then make his life miserable. And for God to say, do not be afraid. Why? Because I can tell that Isaac was afraid. Why? Because he was by himself. He and his wife, that's all. That's all the people. You can count his servant, but then that's not his family. That's why God told him, do not be afraid, for I am with you. The God of your father was with you. And that's very important. Christian, do you know who your God is? Do you know who he is? So that this truth will no longer be a a cliche that Christians always say, God is here, don't worry. And sometimes it does nothing, right? Because you never make time for God. Because God is still just a concept in your life. Even though He is with you, you don't know what He is going to do for you, what He is willing to do for you, what promise that He promised you that you can hold on through your faith. And that's why, that's why it meant nothing. That's why when the time you are afraid and this verse does nothing for you because you never make time to know who your God is. But then look back, brothers and sisters. Look back in church history. Look back to the testimony that the brothers and sisters around you gave and you would find that the God, the God of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, how important that verse actually is. And today, to be frank, there are a lot of things that you should be afraid, right? If you look at the news, if you look at the you know, news about the coronavirus outbreak and everything, people trying to buy every single thing that, it, that you know, the supermarket has and, you know, all those panic, all those, all those um, fear in the world right now. Yeah. Things will get out of control, right? But then, do you know who your God is? Do you know that all these things is still under the control of God? Do you still believe that God will heal you? will take care of all this problem for you? Are you willing to repent? Are you willing to obey yourself just like Isaac obey God to stay in that land and wait for God to bless him? So, are you afraid today? Are you in a panic mode today? If so, I encourage you to open the Bible and once again read the Bible instead of reading the news around you. Because all the things on earth will pass away, but the Word of God stays forever. Half a year later, coronavirus may no longer be an issue, but then there will be something else creep up in the world and make you all panic all over again. Why? Because the world is temporal. All the things on earth is temporal. It will change. It will become different. It may no longer exist. But the word of God lasts forever. Which one would you rather to hold on? The word of God or the news around you? And then the third thing I need you to notice is that God continued to say, I will bless you and it will increase the number of your descendants for the sake of my servant Abraham. Now, this is something new, right? God say, I will bless you and increase the number of your descendants for the sake of my servant Abraham. So not only Isaac will be blessed, but his offspring will be blessed. How wonderful that promise is. How beautiful that is. 
And today, Christians, do you know that when God bless you, He is not only blessing you, but also blessing the people around you. If you never thought of that before, think about it. When the time you are willing to repent, when you are willing to live according to the word of God, you will have integrity. You will be honest. You will treat other people as you are treating yourself. You know how to love one another, based on the word of God, based on the love of God. You know how to love them. So when God is blessing you because you obey, the blessing continue to flow unto the people around you. But when the time you lose focus on God, when the time you start to panic, start to, you know, to be anxious and do all the, you know, misinformed decisions. Guess who suffer? Not only you, but the people around you. Because you start to spread the panic around you as well. So Christians, you need to understand this. You, when the time you claim, you are a Christian. You are declaring that you hold the eternal truth in your life. You, Christian. Hold the eternal truth in your life. You know how important that is. The people around you either see the truth, the God that you believe in your life, or they will see nothing. Just you. Just you. Why? Because you lose focus of God. Because you build your life not upon that rock, but upon the sand. And when you know trial comes, disaster comes, just like what Jesus said, the house on, built on the sand, will be blown away, rain wash it away, and it becomes no more. So Christian. You can be the blessing around the people. I mean, you can be the blessing for the people around you. You can be the blessing for the people around you, or you can just focus on everything but God and start to panic, start to worry, start to be afraid, because you simply chose to focus on the problem. You simply chose to focus on everything else but God. I am always surprised how much time that one person can read, and they always claim that they don't have the time to read the Bible. Of all the things that we read off the phone, how many things? That is actually building your life up. Of all the things that you read of social media, how many things are actually helping you? And we can spend like hours of time to read off from the phone or spend it on the、uh, social media, but we don't have time for God. So you see, you you can right now should be able to see how everything link together. If you know who your God is, then you will continue to spend more time with Him. And the more time you spend with God, will help you to remember more of His promise in your life. And more promise of God in your life, will help you to be at peace instead of in the panic mode. Whenever things things come up, because you know God is with you. Because you now live in the Word of God, God is no longer just a concept in your mind, but you know that He is literally here to help you in your life, no matter what happened. And so you don't have to be afraid anymore. You don't need to fear for anything anymore. 
So Christians, there is a choice, there is a decision that you need to make every single day. Would you rather spend time with God in His Word, read His promise, pray, you know, use your eight hours time to, you know, to be spent on social media, just take one hour out from there and start reading the Bible, spend time with God, know who He is, know His promise for you, know what you should do for Him, what, know what you should obey Him, and be like Isaac, be like Abraham, be like all the men of faith, in the Bible so that you no longer live in fear, no longer live in anxiety and choose to focus on God every single time. That is in your choice. You need to choose it. You need to be intentional to choose it. Sometimes do you feel like praying? No. As a pastor, sometimes do I feel like I should be praying? Yes. But then do I want to pray? No. Why? Because we are all still human. We want to slack off. But that never stop your choice, stop your decision from deciding whether you should spend time with God or not. So Christian, Take this time to really think, to really let this verse, very simple verse, to sink into your life. Do not be afraid, for God is with you. You heard it a thousand times before, but I will have to say it again. Do not be afraid, for God is with you. Let this truth sink into your life. Let your faith grow on this verse. Do not let it go. Because when the time we all face our death, no one can be there for you except your faith in God. That's all. Take your time to know God. And the more you know Him, the less you will be afraid, the less you fear. Because truth always kick fear away. So brothers and sisters, I encourage you to let this verse sink into your life. And I pray that you will build your life upon this truth upon this foundation. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this time and thank you for this word and help us not to be afraid because you are here with us. And Father, we lift the world into your hands. A lot of bad things are happening, pandemic, you know, corruption, all the things. And Father, I know you are in control and you see everything. And I pray that you will be merciful unto every one of us. Help us to build our life upon your truth and help us to lift up one another in prayer unto you. Help us to construct our lives upon your foundation and help us all, Father to see who you truly are. Thank you, Father, for this time. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen.